And really, if you get the message, you, you will be able to transcend the need for any more of this because it's really a message of self-trust and self-empowerment. And then what I'm also trying to create is a community of shared associations about these weird states so that we don't have to all privately think we're losing our marbles. You know, let those who talk to the elves find each other and band together. I am not um, one, I, I am basically a scientist without portfolio because no academic institution would ever trust me with a portfolio. But I, I move in the domain of the gurus, the channelers, the pontificators, and those with secret revealed knowledge from Atlantis and Lemuria. But I have contempt for all of that, whether it's true or not, because they got there the wrong way. You know, you have to come through uh, the rules of evidence and reason. Reason is not science. Don't confuse them. I'm very much a critic of science and the scientific method, but I don't think reason can be tossed out with that uh, bathwater. What is being proposed here is that we're on the brink of the discovery of another world, a world as potentially transforming of our world as the discovery of the Western Hemisphere transformed European civilization in the 1500s. But the world that we're about to discover is inside the mind. It's mental real estate. We who have made consciousness our game by building cities, elaborating literatures, tossing up religions and setting armies marching, we who have made consciousness our game have barely scratched the surface of human consciousness. And it's not like we haven't had a crack at it. I mean, these yogins have been over there digging away for millennia. Egyptian religion, Kabbalism, alchemy, Western traditions of mysticism. And I am a connoisseur of all that. Don't get me wrong. But what astonishes me is how embryonic it all is. We are not the tired inheritors of an ancient and sophisticated civilization in its twilight, which is what they're all telling us. We are the know-nothing, fresh scrub babes who are the new kids on the block who haven't got a clue as to what the human enterprise could really be about. And we are coming now through a very narrow historical neck where the accumulated stupidity of the last 5,000 years, is, the dues now have to be paid. It ain't fair. We didn't do it. You know, we didn't bring the slaves from Africa. We didn't invent oligarchy. We didn't do all these things. Nobody's interested in our whining about how we didn't do it. It's in your face and it's clearly a crisis of two things of consciousness and of conditioning these are the two things that the psychedelics attack we have the technological power the engineering skills to save our planet to cure disease to feed the hungry to end war but we lack the intellectual vision, the ability to change our minds. We must decondition ourselves from 10,000 years of bad behavior. And it's not easy. I mean, imagine, I don't know how many of you have ever confronted the fact that you were addicted to something. And some addictions are really serious. If you've ever been addicted to tobacco or heroin, I'm sure you know what I mean. Well, then imagine a global population addicted to a drug, the use of which is killing us, but we can't, there's no, 
There's no doctor saying you should. There's no rehab clinic to go to when you're a species. We are on an absolutely destructive bender that will end with the death of the earth, the impoverishment of its animal and plant population, and the collapse of our civilization into scarcity unless, unless we can somehow restructure our psychology uh, and, and get hold of ourselves. And psychedelics are the only thing I've ever seen work on an individual level to do that. Uh, you know, in the early 60s, they were curing 75% of chronic alcoholism cases that they treated with LSD. They were curing with one dose of LSD, one 500 microgram dose. Well, now, obviously, LSD is not a magic bullet for alcoholism. That's a preposterous idea. It's simply that you take LSD, and if you're a chronic alcoholic, you review your life, and you notice that you're killing yourself. And then you say, my God, I am killing myself. If I don't stop what I'm doing, I will be dead. That's the strongest motivation to character rehabilitation there is. And that's what we have to carry into the domain of public debate. I can't believe how constipated American institutions are. I mean, here we are under the aegis of a great crusading reformer from Arkansas. A new order in human affairs has dawned, but they suggest closing an air base out at Sacramento and there are editorials as to whether we can survive the shock of this massive change. Well, I've got news for you. Uh, you better do your change-related calisthenics if that was heavy lifting, because what you've got coming at you is, is something very, very different. We are now in a position to actually um, uh, make something of ourselves, extend the design process to human destiny, and, uh, and produce something that will redeem 10,000 years of pogroms and migrations and attempted genocides and pointless wars and stupid religions that make people hate themselves and all the rest of it. If we're going to redeem that legacy, then we have to do something quite spectacular.